This is Rasul for Kalkaz Boxing, joined today by one of boxing's top coaches, Mark Ramsey. How are you, Mr. Ramsey? Very good. Yourself? I'm good, too. Thank you very much. Uh, let me start by saying thank you for joining me for this interview. It's an honor to speak to someone of your caliber. Starting off with the first question, how did you first get into boxing? Oh, my God. It's a long time ago. Actually, uh, like people know, I'm from Canada. I was a hockey, ice hockey player. And uh, I just went to a boxing gym to get in shape for a hockey training camp. And actually, I never go back to hockey. I stay in boxing. I was a 50-50 I was a, uh, amateur boxer. I was not that, that good, but I, I understand very fast in my life that that's the, that's the, the place that I want to, to be. And uh, I turned to be a coach at 18 years old. That's awesome. Speaking on that, who did you look up to as a young boxer and why? Uh, I remember the, the first guy that I looked to was Marvin and Hagler, uh, for sure. I remember that, that I was very young and I looked at that poster for the super fight with uh, Leonard and all those belts. And I was very impressed about how a human being can have so much belt. And uh, it's the, actually the first match that I really look at it. Hagler, guys like Leonard... Uh, I remember watching on ABC back in the days, uh, Jorge Paez fighting and, and all those guys. And, 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 and that was the, the start for me. That's great. Can you share with us your journey into becoming a boxing coach? What inspired you to pursue it as a career? Uh, actually, uh, I, was, I, was, uh, I was, like I said, I was an amateur boxer. And my, my, my trainer was already whole at that time. And uh he finished to to pass away at 100 years old. <laughs> like I passed a, a lot of time on his side, be an assistant, and then just to help him at the beginning, I was like coaching and also uh, boxing uh, as an amateur boxer. And at one point, I realized my my place was really to be a coach, not a boxer. And I just I just uh, start to help him. And at one point, I have my own boxer, and uh, I start my own my own thing, my own gym with my my own business and. Uh, I start to to work a little bit with amateur boxer until that I meet Jean Pascal and Anthony De Carey was my two like first boxer who had a little bit of success and going from Golden Glove to to provincial championship, national championship, and until Olympic game in 2004 as a as a Canadian coach on the team. What advice would you give to people starting their boxing journeys? Wow, there is a lot of advice, but the first advice, you, you, you need to love that game. You need, if you like, not like you do it, boxing, you do it or you don't do it. Like if you do half, it's not enough. Like even for guys who just try to, to be an amateur boxer or even as a coach is the same, it's the same thing. It's a sport that you make a commitment, like you're in or you're out. What is your coaching philosophy and how has it evolved over the years? Involved a lot. Like when I was young, you know, when you're young, you, you have your method of, of training and everything and you really believe on it with time. And also because every time that you meet a new boxer, it's a, a new start. You before you, you have to coach, you have to deal with a personality, with a, a psychological profile. Also, you need to adjust a little bit as a coach. You cannot like impose the same rules, same technique, same thing with everybody. Like you need to to learn and to to understand the the person and after that you can start teaching and uh this is my philosophy about 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 uh training all especially in my gym like i have boxer from all around the world i have french guy african guy i have russian i have quebec guys like this is like united nation here that's hilarious um <laughs> What are your thoughts on the current state of boxing regarding the rise of social media boxers? Do you think um, its effects have been positive or negative? Depend on how you, you control that. Like, and also depend on your personality. Me personally, I don't like it. I don't, I don't, I, I prefer to stay quiet, to, uh, to just focus on my job and to impose that the night of the fight. But some, some people, they, they use it very good. Like they use it to, make some publicity and, and, and sometimes boxing need that. Like we, we forget, especially as a coach, sometimes we forget that promoter have to sell something to, to the fans. And we, because we are so focused about perform and, and, and make sure that the boxer is very focused on what he's doing. And we try to take him away from all those, uh, those things, but it's very important also to sell your sport. Moving on to the next question. How did you initially start working with Arthur and how has his training and fighting style evolved since? It's a long time ago. It's almost 10 years now. Uh, first, I was 
going all around the world to try to find some good prospect. I remember I went to first time I, I know him already uh, looking at him on a couple of tournaments, but the first time I see him live was in Chicago. And I think it was 2007 World Amateur Championship. And I look at him, it was very clear already at that time that with a professional style, he already dominate as an amateur boxer, what is very rare. Like you, you look at all those amateur boxers who just like doing a, a kind of touch and don't get it, a boxing. But that was not the case at all with, uh, with Archer. And, uh, but I didn't talk to him for maybe a two years before like we, we meet each other after that. I signed in that tournament, I signed Eleanor Alvarez and Oscar Rivas, and both guys became world champion after. Uh, and a long time after, I have somebody, a, a businesswoman from Montreal, who, who just approached me and uh, see if we can work together on, on Archer and what I was thinking about him. And at that time, it was very tough for us to, to get close to Russian boxer. And I was a kind of, I don't even want to try because we don't talk the same language and everything. But that, that lady wants to bring Archer in, in Montreal and um, they want like him to train with me. And it was a great opportunity. To be honest, at the beginning, I don't really believe he's going to come. And one day they call me. He was in a restaurant in Montreal. He wanted to talk to me. I talked with him. We we put thing on the, on the table, and we're working since that day together. I want to say congrats on the victory over Calum Smith last Saturday. It was a phenomenal performance. What was the plan going into the fight? Listen, when you go, especially with a guy who's good as 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 Callum Smith, you cannot go with one plan because if your plan doesn't work. Uh, you get stuck in a fight with, with, with that wrong plan. But we, we, we want to start the fight, make sure that we have a great, great defense because we know that Callum Smith can generate some power, especially in long distance with the, the right hand and short distance with the, the left hook. And we are like, we, we know that those little things, we want to take care of this, but we want also to impose who's hard to be able. Not only focusing on the opponent, but focusing on what we do good and try to impose that. Like, we all know that Archer is physically strong. Uh, we want to go over there with a good defense, pressure jab, make sure that we push him, push him on a rope and, and work over there. Uh, and when Archer is able to do that, especially when people don't touch Archer, like it's very, very tough to do 12 rounds with that guy. So in your opinion, what are his strengths as a boxer and what sets him apart from others? Do you think his faith and his upbringing have played a significant role in his success? There is a lot of things. Like first, I have to admit, like when he came to Canada, he was already a good boxer. It's not like I, I take him and I make it. It's not the case. Like he was already a very good amateur boxer. He was a good boxer and he was physically already very strong. We just try to keep pushing on that direction. He's doing things since he's uh, nine years old. He's doing boxing since he's, he's nine years old. He developed like a, a lot of strength. Like, I think it's genetic, but also the kind of exercise that he's doing and doing every day. The discipline and everything but people see from outside that he's very strong this is one thing and people just talk about the 20 and 20 uh, 100 and, uh, ratio knockout but it will never was for us uh, uh, something that we focus we really try to work good and prepare for 12 run every fight and and uh, and i think people a little bit underestimate his, his sophistication of, of his technique like he's very He's a very uh, tricky as a fighter, and he's, he's a very good technician also. Yeah, I agree with that. I remember talking with Mr. Scully about that. He also said he's a he's definitely a technician more than anything. Yes. How would you describe your relationship with Arthur outside of the ring, and how important is this relationship to both of your successes? It's fun because we have a little bit the same uh, profile. He's not a big talker. I'm not a big talker also. That's, that's the thing. Uh, and sometimes... We will like to communicate a little bit more, but we know what we want each other. Uh, it's very professional. Like he push himself. I don't have to push himself. I, I don't have to do that job. Like he do it himself. Uh, of course, the work as as a trainer, I have to also to push myself. Like it's, it's a very demanding athlete, but for the good reason. And have you learned anything from working with him that has influenced your coaching? Of course. Like you learn a little bit of something every time that you work with a new boxer. Like, just like I told you before, that the adjustment that you have to do with the psychological aspect and everything, you learn something every time. But maybe in Archer's case, it's a little bit more because he brings some 
a Russian school of boxing thing that, that we don't really teach in North America. And uh, some, th- some stuff I want to modify. I remember when he came, he was very high on his position. I tried to drop him a little bit, make sure that he's even more compact in defense and more ground for generate a li- even more power. This is something that we work from day one. But at the same time, he bring, he bring a couple of technique and punch and way to do thing that I, w- I don't want him to lose that. Like, it's not something that I teach because I, I don't come from that system. But I can see what he's doing and I can see it's effective. And I want him to keep going with that technique. Who, anyway, you just look at the result of Russian boxing school as an amateur. They, they do very well for a long time, a long period. Let's talk about arguably the biggest fight in boxing right now, Dimitri Bivol versus Arthur. In your view, what can fans expect from this bout? And how do you predict the fight will unfold considering the strengths and styles of both fighters? I think it's a, it's a, it's a fight that we want. I believe also it's a fight that Bivol want. Uh, it's just like we have to do the, the things uh, right. Uh, Bivol is a great fighter. Like everybody knows, a great technician. He's fast. He's very smart in the ring. Arthur have also a strange point. But I, I believe that the style of both guys is going to make a great fight for the fans. Like this is something that we want to see. But I think there is no deception. Of the night of the fight is going to be something great. I'm very excited for it, as I'm sure many others are. Well, that's pretty much it for me. Thank you to everyone watching. And also thank you again for joining me today, Mr. Ramsey. My pleasure.